This metatainment production is brought to you today by the Samurai Aquatics and Decor MetaVenture. Scan that QR code or click that link in the description and dive yourself headfirst into the Samurai Aquatics Discord server to pleasure your peepers on our current and future range of outdoor decor. The Wine and She Show is a Metaverse and NFT discussion and interview series brought to you by Metaverse Ventures Entertainment and host Ben68 and more cheats. Warning, the information and opinions within are solely for views of the individuals involved contains content not suitable for anyone. Well, hello there. Thanks for listening to and watching the Wine and Cheese in the Metaverse show. I'm Ben68 and I'm here with my co-host More Cheese for episode number 81, recording on Friday the 21st of April for Cheese, which is Saturday the 22nd for me. <laughs> <laughs> Today we talked Upland and all the nonstop amazingness they have been smooshing in our faces. We had Igor, aka NFT Catch Up from Veggie's Farm NFT game. He talked about his Polygon project and joined us for some article perusing fun. That's right. Uh, I can't keep that up. Sorry. So yes, sickos, <laughs> peel off some layers and prepare to get yourself well and truly vegified in this latest episode of <laughs> the worst show ever. Wine and cheese. Time for wine and cheese. Wine and cheese. Time for wine and cheese. Cheese. One is a wanker, one slang and stumps. One's from Australia, one's from the Bronx. Talking about the metaverse and NFTs. Interviewing all the real crypto cheese. Hello and welcome to Wine and Cheese in the Metaverses show. This is episode 81. I'm More Cheese here with my co-host Ben68 and we have guest host Igor aka NFT Ketchup. He's from Hello. Hello. He's from Veggie Farm Games and Edgy Veggies. So I actually saw this through Left House's show. He someone told him to play it and he started playing it I think or he was playing it. But I was like, all right, you know, I'm I don't play any polygon games, but I'm 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 putting the the cart before the horse, right, Ben? Oh, it's all right. You can all right, do all right. Intro. <laughs> yeah. So I started playing it. It's a polygon game. I'm a big fan of polygon because of the gas, yep. like a lot less gas, a lot better, and it's adorable. And we'll talk more about it later on. Uh, first, let's get into some coinage. Ben, what you got? Yeah, well, I just had a bit of a quick look before, and um, there's some nice fat red candles kicking in. Like, what's going on here? Yeah, what's happening? Igor said that he noticed some action too. Like, there seems to be a big downward trend happening at the moment. Yep. Uh, I believe we can even short a bit further, to be mm. honest. Um, there is that one candle to the left, to the left a little bit. Right, right there. It, I say, um, if it goes below the wick, we're in yep. trouble. But if it doesn't, I think we should be all right. Yeah, this is the daily chart too. So I'll just switch over to the, let's do the four hour. Oh, yeah. Look at that nice big fat red one. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Wait, can you do like a, a, a mm -hmm. week? A week, yep, weekly. Yep, there you go. There's the weekly. Yeah, that's not that's not terrible. No, nah, that it seems to be some short term action. Yeah. But yes, if you're brave, you might be able to short like Eagle you see, was suggesting. Well you see no, I wouldn't short. Um no, wait till it wait till it starts going up and then down again. But if you no no no, don't change yet, please. Yep. Uh get out of that. <laughs> I'm trying. Yep. <laughs> you see that head and shoulders just to the left of it? Yep, they uh to the left. To the left. <laughs> what, way over here. Yeah, right there, right there, Ben. 
So that right, right there is a shoulder, head, shoulder. Right after the second shoulder, it always goes down and then yep. it fills the gap. Right now, it's filling the gap. I think it right now is a time to watch, see what it does. But I think if you were going to short it, you would have shorted it at 30. Yeah, you kind of missed the boat, as Eagle was saying, I think. Yeah, yeah you can uh, miss uh, the short, but to be honest, uh, we broke below the support level of 27 .8, 27.7, and the next support level would be 26 point something uh, on those weak uh, that you pointed out mm. uh, and uh, it's pre I'm pretty sure that it will be filled out unless something crazy happens on weekend you know the weekend pump yes that can happen too I guess it depends how brave you are <laughs> oh, very, very silly yeah very silly and very brave <laughs> <laughs> and, and I hope you're doing covered uh, shorting. <laughs> uh, what is the difference between long and short? Come on. Well, covered, uh, covered. You have the fun. You have the share. Ah, yeah, it. for for sure. Uh, you can <laughs> you can never put more than you can afford to lose. To lose. This is uh, this is the first rule. So it's currently twenty seven. Point three two, and I will short like right now. Uh, maybe I will lose a bit, but I will put some stop loss. Nice, nice. Yeah, I'm. I'm actually a, a contract trader myself. Really? Yep. Nice. Yeah, we're just looking at the Polygon Matic price too. It's also taking a bit of a dive. Yeah, it's everything. It will be everything. Yeah, now. follow along. Interesting. All right. Well, that's that's good to know. I'm not ready to start my dollar cost averaging up again just yet. See what happens. Well, I'm actually looking at Matic. If it goes under a dollar, I'm going to buy more because my average right now is 0.90 on that. And I have yes. quite a bit of it. So that's pretty cool. Very good. Yeah, yeah. I just... um. I did my dollar cost averaging and I put my end date in and I want to sit on it for a year so I can get the tax break. So if <laughs> even if I add one more coin, well, then that whole taxing kind of resets. You know, the, you can do the first in, first out situation, but it's just gets so bloody confusing and messy. I just like to try and keep things simple. Uh -huh. Yes. Because I don't have much to lose. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, shall we move on? What's happening in Upland? Yep. I've been completely disassociated this week. Um, I've just been smashed in real life, so I don't really know what's going on. Get us well, up to speak. Well, we have the rest of Spark Week. I tried my my hand at doing some uh, treasure hunting, and, and I figured out that I am really bad at it. Uh, I'm going to try tonight. I'm in Fresno right now. I don't really have that. I wish that they had it in... The Bronx again because I I have a decent web there my my main web is in San Francisco and and that's not one of the the places here. Do you play Upland, uh, Igor? Uh, no. Uh, to be honest, I'm not playing much uh, except uh, with this uh, you know longing and shorting. Uh, all of my other time is taken usually by development of the game, uh, marketing of the game, uh, chatting with friends on the internet, uh, usually about crypto these times, and this is more or less it. Uh, but I hope, I hope uh, there will come a day that I will be able to try out all the nice stuff that been released uh, recently or not so recently <laughs> well i'm in everything i don't sleep and i'm kind of crazy uh but upland is my favorite i also had this one is on eos with with also wax nfts 
And I'm also in a wax MMORPG, which we had on the show before. But <clears throat> yours is the first polygon, which I'm excited about. And <clears throat> Upland is kind of like a super app where it's kind of like a platform for layer two. So I'm actually trying to get Avalon somehow situated inside the Upland world and Upland situated in their world. So you need someone to to go out there and kind of uh, shop metaverse platforms for you. <laughs> I yeah, tried yeah. Upland, I tried. <laughs> that usually takes a bit of development time uh, yeah. for something to be situated inside something other. Uh, but if uh, there will be enough benefits for uh, both well, worlds, then uh, there's a high probability. Exposure, really. I know um, a lot of people are creating level two. There's one world of world of football in Steam where you could go uh, in and have your Upland account connected to it. And uh, you play, you could win rewards. People can sponsor games. We have uh, a lot of stuff coming out. Mavian, um, uh, Jackie Sai is in there. You should check it out. Yeah. But yeah, we got the Ethereum bridge oh. coming as well. Yes. Um, there's apparently going to be, what was the other blockchain that was mentioned? Flow. I expect Polygon and Solana and everything in time will eventually follow up. But yeah, as Igor said, all of that stuff takes a lot, a lot of time. Yeah. Yeah, taking into account the current status of uh, overall development uh, of all the infrastructure around the blockchain technologies, uh, at this particular moment of time, there is no need to uh, be, uh, you know, uh, binded to some specific chain. Uh, most of the project are either uh, totally chain agnostic or have an ability uh, to use uh, assets from different chains. And uh, this will definitely be a direction. Speaking about myself, uh, like last week or this week, a guy from Binance uh, approached me on the LinkedIn and uh, asked whether I'd like to make uh, wages farm uh, also available on the Binance chain. So we had a nice small discussion. They also offer in some free uh, marketing services. I don't believe that uh, it will influence uh, the overall project too much, but uh, in any case, I'm starting to think about like cross-chain opportunities uh, because this is the way it should to be, and this is most convenient for players. And yeah. yep. uh, each and each and every game in the end of the road is made for players. Yeah, it's the way everything's headed for the future for sure. Yeah. So right. I want to ask you a question, Ben. Do you treasure hunt? Have you treasure hunted recently? I gave up <laughs> on treasure hunting two years ago. Yeah, I don't <laughs> even bother. It's just not worth my time. I'd rather just flip some properties for USD and buy Spark. It's just not worth it. Although I missed out this this um, this Spark week. They had a flipping. Uh, now, normally I get up at 2 a.m. to to get the to buy the one spark or something like that. But this time around, I only wanted to gobble up some of the crumbs. So I wanted to get <laughs> uh, 0.15 or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I thought, oh, well, I'll just sleep in. And because normally those smaller numbers of sparks stay available for, you know, days almost. So I thought I'll just get up at my regular get up time. But when I got up at my regular get up time, they're all gobbled up and gone. You realized was, only... was right. Yeah, it was only the big values that were available, which, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think that's ever happened before. Nope, never. Yeah. Never. So that was interesting. Everyone gobbling up the, the small amounts, which are the most expensive, which yeah. is kind of strange. But well, I think you're right. Everyone get, got caught with their pants down and now they're scrambling for crumbs. Yeah, there's so many things that you need Spark for now. And then, oh God, I can't wait till they 
they men, they uh come out with the stem, the life oh, token. Yes. Now I was thinking about that. I was thinking about that through the week. Do you think they're going to do an airdrop with that as well, or we're going to have to buy every single amount? I don't know. I think I'm putting this out there. Would you know? I think that they should, at the very least, do a ten percent airdrop to reward people that have, in quotes, invested in Upland. Like if you've treasure hunted Spark, if you have a balance of Spark, then you are heavily time wise invested in the Upland. If you've purchased Spark, well, obviously you're significantly invested. I think they should do um, at least a ten percent. So if you've got ten Spark, then you should be airdropped. Um, one one of the um, life tokens or whatever it is. I think that would be a good way to kind of, you know. I bet you 50 Upex. Put a shout out. That they're not going to do that. Yeah. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, they are a business. They need to make money. Um, if they do nothing, I think that's pretty, not greasy. I just think that's pretty shitty, really. It's not, not really looking after the people that have looked after you. So yeah. uh, hopefully that something comes of that. So we'll see what happens there. Right. Because yeah, I'm certainly not in the in the um situation now where if they release the life token at Genesis Week, which is a high probability, yeah. um, that I can go gangbusters and go and buy a whole heap of it. That's just ain't gonna happen. So yes, we'll have to see. London is coming, baby. Yeah, I saw this pop up the other day. Now, I, I haven't looked into this at all. What's the deal? Is this another partial? Is this two-city release again? So it's like a Dallas-Arlington thing? Well, I didn't look into Birmingham. I looked into London. It's a tier one. It's going to be 20,000 uh, properties, which wasn't anywhere near L.A. But oh, no, it's... L.A. was 150 or something. Stupid. Yeah, yeah. Um, I feel like 20,000 should be enough for a node tier one when was the last tier one we had was it la yeah most likely now london being the first international tier one i think people are in for a massive sticker shock yeah i think so yeah. too but i 20... think i don't know i think they're gonna be ready for it yeah twenty thousand. i think um you know, I think the prices are going to be astronomical. That's the way everything's been headed. I can't imagine they're going to flip and do lower. That would wouldn't make any sense com compared to some of the recent releases with the city the the, the property prices. If they do lower than twenty k, then people will be mad. This kind of looks like the Oakland map that they put out. Yep. And that's good enough for a node. I see so many good areas here. Yeah, I, I didn't mean like lower the property amount. I mean oh. the property prices. Oh, I think no, no. This prices is gonna are going like to be astronomical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is going to be crazy. Yeah. It's going to be crazy, but it'll, you, that's what you get. What's your plan? What are you doing? Uh, you London, I might Birmingham? sit out. I might sit out. Okay. Sit out completely. I might get some. Really? really? Yeah, oh. I might I might wait and see if the people start selling under mint after they full mode look uh, at that a tier one 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 yeah as i said tier one that's the best of the best the cream yeah. of the crop yeah that's the best and you're gonna sit out yeah whoa <laughs> where are you going there i'll definitely go there mm -hmm. um but i i in the last month and a bit i've spent somewhere in the order of 10 million upex on construction and cars so i ain't going into this with any sort of plan or focus or anything i'll just go in there and mint probably five on my tail if i can i'll grab five on my tail within a 200k budget i'll get yeah. what i can get and that's it maybe i'll do that too maybe you i gotta get talk something yeah i'll go in with 300 Three hundred dollars, three hundred thousand upex. Yeah, I'll I'll do two hundred k just because I've got so much other stuff to save for. And if they're releasing this a tier one 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 city before Genesis Week, well, what the hell's coming for Genesis Week? I I know it can't yeah, be I, Las Vegas extension. That would be trash. This is like 
this is like the three months of Christmas, you know, on the the first day of the three months of Christmas, Upland gave to me. Like we keep getting these announcements, 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 and X one even said himself, these aren't gonna stop. Yeah, yeah. I think it's well, gonna wait. be huge in Vegas. So they're having mm -hmm. uh Igor, they're having a Vegas meetup. <laughs> In nice. June, on June eighth, I'm gonna go. This will be my second um, Vegas meet, and it's just awesome. You get to meet the founders, you get to meet the community. This time, they're gonna have exhibition booths, booths that the community can uh, reserve, and and like I'm gonna be there with the wine and cheese show and our other ventures that Ben and Ben and myself are are involved in, such as we have a business inside upland that's very lucrative outdoor decor now known as map asset um <clears throat> and they they usually announce something huge during during this time and they're putting out like a new tier one city that people could go in and mint is really freaking huge so oh. to announce this before the actual meetup in, in Genesis week is, it's just blowing our mind. We're like, wow, like what the heck are they going to announce in Genesis week? Yeah. yeah, there will be probably something even bigger. Oh, I hope so. That would be Tokyo, ideal. Seoul, somewhere maybe. Yeah. To a I'd lot say, of speculation that it's going to be an Asian city. Yeah. I think Tokyo... Or see, yeah, both of those would be amazing and STEM. That would be great. Yes. But that's it on on the uh... on the upland. Yeah, Birmingham is what again. It's another seventy percent FSA. Um, it's just uh, multi accountants paradise. Yeah, basically. Yeah, I'll I'll probably I'll leave Birmingham. I'll leave the floor to settle for a a week or so, and then I'll just buy two or three on the um on the uh the secondary markets i would imagine but yes yeah, and, i and think the stress test look at how much spark you could win that's crazy uh, i'm not getting up at 2 a.m to get stressed out <laughs> yes um i think uh this yeah i think i'd be surprised if london sells out immediately uh there there is a lot of upex burning holes in people's pocket i know that but i think the sticker shock is going to be extreme to the maximus. Yeah. Yeah. It's we'll going have to, to wait be pretty. and see. All right. Speaking of our business, did you want to get out of there? Now, last week you set up a challenge. Do you remember what that was, Jeez? With the whole miles looking left through the Periscope yes. thing? Yes. Thank you for helping me with this. <laughs> I could what see your face he screw at? up. Yeah. What the hell was miles looking at now? The prize, you said uh, one Halloween ornament. I said, well, bugger that. Let's do five. So this is a pretty hefty prize, especially if you're somebody looking to boost your neighborhood score with outdoor decor. And that's, let's see who's going to win. Da -da 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 -da. Igor, Apologies. I love your cup. I love your cup, by the way. Hogwarts Express. Yeah. Look at that. It's the goldsmith. That is so cool. <laughs> three and three fourths. Yeah, Ooh. this one is brought from London, by the way. Oh, wow. Did you go? Um, did they have like a thing where you could go to Hogwarts yeah, World? All the, no, no, just bought it somewhere on the street. Oh. All the shops are fulfilled with all the possible, how they call, Harry Potter. Harry <laughs> Potter. Harry Potter. Uh, <laughs> Potter. <laughs> um, uh, Harry Potter uh, attributes. So I got a cup from London. Nice. Nice. Yes. So the goldsmith, getting back to that, he won five Halloween ornaments. Congratulations to goldsmith. I'll put those on reserve for you in the showroom later today. Now, oh, he wow. Suggested he got five. All right. Yeah. He suggested what? That Miles was going to be <clears throat> looking at a boat. Now, there has been speculation about boats as transportation for as far back as the Manhattan release, if you believe it or not. Because there was a lot of peers and stuff associated with that, and then oh, yeah. I believe it was um, what's the B one that B city that I always forget? Not Brook was it the Brooklyn? Yeah, that was the next one after that, wasn't it? The Brooklyn Burn. We were speculating that there was going to be a ferry access point for that and boats. And uh, whatnot, but it, that never came through. So, well, we'll see. 
We shall see. All right, that's covered us for the upland. All right, so Igor, pour us a hot cup of Veggie Farm Game and Edgy Veggies. Tell us about yourself. Tell us about your project. I I do have a, a question, um, like, like just, yeah, go ahead. Maybe you'll answer it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, my name is Igor. I'm from uh, Kiev, Ukraine. Uh, living here all my life. Uh, I have more than 15 years of software development experience and on top of that a bit of uh, blockchain experience. So uh, after I finished my uh, like previous full-time job, I decided to create something interesting like myself. Uh, like to work a bit for myself again. <laughs> uh, and this is how uh, this overall idea emerged. Uh, so uh, the people saw Wedges Farm first time, I believe somewhere in uh, December uh, 2021. And it was the first uh, preview release. Uh, but it was already a bit playable. Uh, and uh, I'm working and maintaining and uh, developing this game uh, starting from those times. Uh, not so much to tell, like, to be honest, uh, uh, working hard and trying to make it as fun uh, for players as possible. Nice. Now I'm a player. I I found this game. Um, I am currently gonna get level four right now, <clears throat> and I wanted to know. Um, well, first of all, how did you come up with this idea for uh, for veggies? Did it did it just kind of you're like, oh, you know, I I I really love vegetables. <laughs> Yeah, I decided to do something different. Everyone right. been doing uh, some uh, apes, uh, bears, bulls, some <laughs> animals. So I decided, why not vegetables? Yeah. Uh, and uh, then uh, this idea uh, emerged in my head. Uh, about this uh, edgy wages and wages farm stuff. Uh, to be honest, I myself is uh, I myself am a virtual reality advocate, and I really, really wanted to make something in VR. But uh, in order to kickstart a project in virtual reality, you need to have much more time or spare resources. Uh, because of uh, complexity and uh, time that needed to that you need to spend if you are doing everything uh, yourself, um, and uh, so I decided to start with something really, really like small, fast, and easy uh, that uh, will not, you know. Uh, be super complex in terms of uh, technology and will uh, that I will be able to kickstart myself pretty fast. Uh, then I analyzed uh, what's in uh, gaming market, what's popular, um, what could be the genres of the game. Uh, and for sure, everyone wants and myself to be honest to do something crazy in virtual reality, some uh, shooter like um, Last Half Life Alex, uh, or uh, you know, something even more fancy. But uh, this was the sweet spot uh, <laughs> for my uh, uh, resources, abilities. Uh, and the time I had. 
All right. Well, yeah, it's very cute. It reminded me of Farmville. It uh, that's kind of what caught my interest. I'm I just leveled to four. I'm building my bakery. Um, wait, let me move this down. So I have ninety six gems. I have some money. I had to sell some stuff because I I don't have my bank yet. My bank comes at level five, which I'm halfway there. Um, yeah, uh, as soon as you will be as soon as soon as you will build the bank, you will be able to withdraw some magic from the game. Oh uh, wow! Yeah, uh, this is how it's working. Yeah. So in general, by doing any action inside the game, like planting, uh, harvesting, uh, selling, uh, you gain some XP. And those, uh, like, in general, one spent or earned coin converts to one XP. Then those XPs are converted to uh, Polygon Matic on weekly basis. Uh, depends on the weekly pool. So the price of each XP fluctuates. Uh, there's some formula on the website. So all this data is uh, available to everyone. But in general, yeah, after you build in the bank, you are able to withdraw and then you are able to hold more like up to 100k uh, coins. So, all right. Uh, oh, really? All right. So, yeah. yeah, you're answering all my questions. This is amazing. <laughs> I was going to ask you, like, how do you start earning when you start earning? So the bank is that sweet spot. Um, <clears throat> so when I make the bank, I'll be able, and then like. I can only hold six thousand coins right now, but then when I when I reach level five and I create the bank, that's when I can get up to a hundred thousand coins. Yes, yeah. yeah. Wow. Uh, in general, the overall rule uh, is uh, at least at this particular stage is uh, get as more stuff as you can and sell it right away because this will speed up you gain in the xp yeah xp influences your uh, level and also xp influences your uh, weekly earnings from the game yeah so how i started is actually really easy i got the gold pass and then i purchased the um gold chest and mm -hmm. what that did was it gave me extra co uh, coins extra health to get a head start this is where uh another little game here to kind of get a good mm -hmm. amount of coins and and this and let me see if i could bring up my and when nope. you said you purchased those are you talking about um external nfts that you bought on a marketplace or something or yes. is this within the app um, actually, so if you go, if you go to the white paper and if I just actually kind of exit out of that and then go back in, it'll give me yeah. like information. I know I have to go back in. I'm going to go back in. Well, actually uh, you can get uh, these assets inside the in -game right store. Yeah. Either in game store or in the external mar marketplaces. Mm, uh, it's traded on OpenSea. Uh, there was some collection on Tofu NFT, I believe. And uh, maybe someone is trading on different marketplaces. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So, like, I just wanted to show if anybody was playing the game and they didn't know how to search back into it. If you exit out of the game and come back in and you click inside the PVP battles, it brings you to this. I don't know if it, wait, let me reshare. It brings you to this, right? Where yeah, it you should can, bring you to the website. Yeah. Yes, which is great because everything you want is here. Uh, minting page, it'll tell you, get it on OpenSea. And this will this will bring you exactly to the open C page. So if I click on this. So you bought the gold pass 20 Matic, so that's. No, I believe uh, there, uh, from time to time, there are nice offers on the open C. Oh yeah, there someone, was. Yeah. Yes. 
when someone is bored from the game uh, and they list in for less uh, than they minted for. So eventually everything will be minted out and then we will uh, decide on the next step. But at least for the in-game items like uh, chests and uh, etc., there will be internal internal marketplace. And uh, there's also a plan to launch uh, our own token. So uh, people will be able to spend internal token for the stuff from internal marketplace, like everyone's doing. Mm -hmm. But it was very easy and it was very like, because usually you're like, oh, I, I'm, I'm in wax because I can't afford ETH or Poly, but you come here and it's actually really affordable. Yeah, right? that's like th $3. That's very entry level. That's great. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and it's the general format is one that most people would be very familiar with if they play any sort of idle clicker online games. It has a very similar look and feel to it, from what I can gather. So yeah, yeah. I believe so. But uh, this game have couple of small uh, interesting <laughs> additions. Uh, first of all, uh, as you saw, as you already saw, there is a mini game inside the mm -hmm. mine. Then on level uh, 14 or 15, when you will be able to build a soul mill, uh, there will be there will be another mini game. Nice. Uh, then after you build a bridge and have access to a different bank of the river, uh, it will open you overall new location with the town. And inside the town, you will be able to build all the town facilities which are needed for uh, PvP stuff. Yes. Oh, cool. Yes. And yeah, like barracks, shooting range, stable, etc. Uh, and these PvP battles is something which really differs the game because uh, I haven't saw any, at least crypto game, which, uh, you know, combines uh these two types of uh, gaming experience yeah and as as i said like a lot of these kind of mini games that we can see they're ones that people would be somewhat familiar with but the key difference here is you're playing to earn that's yeah. the big difference yeah you're not just playing to entertain or whatever so yeah no i think it looks cool yeah this is so cool and then it's like you think you've seen it all and then you're like, oh, shoot, I could do PvP. Oh, wow, there's going to be another island. And it, it, I just can't wait to see how this game evolves even more. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, yeah well, Chase. there are plenty of plans. Nice. And Chase, you said you you bought a few things to get you kicked off. What was that worth, like 20 bucks or something like that, maybe? Um, I would say about 23 bucks. Yeah. And you've been playing for how long? um let me see maybe about five days four days and you're already at that point almost where you're getting ready to build the bank and then you can start getting some yes. funds back out of it yeah that's cool <laughs> yeah within within less than a week of casual play uh... the, the chest the chest did help me a lot mm. um because it gave me the extra energy i needed to play the mini game and I just reached level four just today. But it's it's like any of these sorts of games, as I said, too. Like if it's a mobile game, you can buy a double coin in-app purchase or something like that. It's yeah. There's always little things to help boost your progress. Yes, you can grind it out for an extra few weeks or whatever, or you can, you know, put a little bit of money in to help your progress. So I think that's a very yeah. cool system. Yeah. This is exactly what I wanted to achieve, uh, to... Yep built a game which everyone is familiar with the same more or less uh, same uh, mechanic me, me, mechanics how you call it mechanics uh, yeah me mechanics yeah. yeah thank you i'm not native english speaker obviously so sorry for my pronunciation from time to time That's all right. uh, but uh, the game will uh, instead of just sucking money from our players it will also give back and that's, 
the the giving aspect part that's the pool that you talked about like it it fluctuates that's funded by the fees from the purchases or the yeah, how, yeah, how yeah, is by that the, funded exactly and yeah. this is funded by players by new players who start the game by old players who spend uh, their uh, money or their crypto on some in game assets Hmm. Uh, like uh, chests, like additional plots, like uh, wedging eyes for PvP. Yep. And uh, again, you can play completely without, you know, uh, spending uh, like this extra, but those style stuff helps for the game. And then I uh, give back to community. Uh, depending on week. Uh, actually, it's supposed to be sitting at around 10% of giving back, but it moved to closer like 70% or something at this particular moment nice. uh, because uh, I'm not, you know, taking out from game yet anything for myself. Yeah, it's still establishing. Moment. So uh, I'm spending on some marketing, I'm spending on... Uh, infrastructure because you need to pay for hardware for servers for uh, domain yep. for the website blah 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 so uh, <laughs> the game totally covers everything of this uh, the game gives ability uh, for players also to earn uh, it's uh, rewarding like many many players are made uh, like returned all their investments and earned on top I, yeah. We are not speaking about crazy money here because this is not the kind of project with the entry level of like two hundred, three hundred dollars, or like six hundred. Yeah, it like seems taxi. very low risk, but there's you know there's a potential for future reward sort of thing. What what I like about it is is it seems to be a good bridge for kind of mainstream. Like if Cheese and I always talk about like uh, with anything blockchain, is grandma going to be able to understand it? You know? <laughs> As I keep saying, there's savvy grandmas out there, but grandmas and grandpas, whatever you want to say. Uh, somebody who doesn't know about blockchain, if you get together at Thanksgiving and you start talking a bit to Uncle Jim, you know, his eyes are going to glaze over. He's not going to know what you're talking about. But Something like this, like as I said, it's the the look and the feel and the basic mechanics would be very familiar to a lot of people. So that's yeah. that that stepping point or that bridge, it's it doesn't seem to be that extreme. Like you could definitely see somebody who has no idea about blockchain, if they had a little bit of assistance getting the basics set up, then they'd just be able to run with it themselves. And what I did in the beginning was to show an easy passage for somebody to get from the game to the website, to the open sea, and it was flawless and seamless. So you mm. did a good job with that. Like whenever you open the game, it gives you that window. If you click inside the window, it gives you the the, the website. On the website, you can find the open sea. So it's perfect. I want to ask a question. Um, the passes, are they stackable? Uh, no. All right. And another question. Hold on. Come on, internet. All right. What's this? What is this? Uh, if you <laughs> go there and uh, there is, there are three dots on upper right corner. Yep. There should be refresh metadata. Uh, yeah, let's do it one more time and then refresh the page. Let's see. I don't know myself. This is something which was minted, oh. but uh, the metadata was not uh, you right. know, fetched was... by the. It was not fetched by the OpenSea. Uh, mm -hmm. They have, from time to time, they have uh, a really huge load on their platform, yeah. and then they are limiting all this new stuff. Uh, so uh, from time to time, it does it is not fetched automatically and you can you know refresh it i was i was thinking it was a secret <laughs> i'm disappointed no, under some sort of scoop <laughs> yes by the way this is exactly how people are doing uh, reveal on their collections so uh -huh. uh, they put uh, dummy metadata with some cover 
I'm yeah. like technical guy speaking about technical stuff. Maybe someone will be interested. I don't know. Uh, they put metadata in this uh, NFT with some uh, basic color, and then they are fulfilling uh, the correct data after some, you know, reveal date or reveal event or um, uh, reveal event on the blockchain. Doesn't matter. So it's like a mutable kind of thing. Uh, this is how NFTs works, uh, like in general. So uh, there are two main types of NFTs, two standards. One oh is, no, no, I understand. Yeah. But there's, there's a. I'm, I'm a. I have a collection myself, so I do understand NFTs. Um, but there's, there's something called immutable data where you can change the data inside the NFT once it's out there. Um. Uh, this is happening when you upload your metadata onto IPFS, uh, which is file system, which is hosted on the blockchain. And then people calling it immutable. Yeah. If you host your metadata for your NFTs somewhere else, this could be your server, this could be like, basically you can host it from Dropbox even. It doesn't matter. Uh, then uh, you are able to change it, yeah. uh, but uh, some parts of uh, NFTs in a collection of wages farm are immutable. For example, each NFT have property of type, and if you mean that the gold pass, for example, it will always have immutable property uh, gold pass. This is handled by the smart contract which I developed. So there is no way like that you will do the gold pass and then I will go and sneaky change it to the bronze or something else. So <laughs> the, that would be uh, hella greasy. Yeah, 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 this will be Please some crazy like stuff uh, and <laughs> crazy nonsense stuff because uh, there is totally no reason to do that. But uh, in any case, just sharing uh, a bit of stuff under the hood so uh the proper there is a property type on the smart contract and it's immutable after you minted your uh, nft so after it was created it will always be a gold pass but uh, some properties like uh, i don't know uh, picture or some other options are uh, changeable yeah. Uh, by me as a game developer. Maybe in future, you know, when I was doing this uh, smart contract, I put, uh, you know, and this is a room for uh, some possible, probable future um, uh, features of the game. For example, maybe uh, there will be an ability to also move the game progress with the specific pass and to store some of this progress in uh, this metadata. And uh, especially for those purposes, I left it. Uh, I have left the ability to change it. Yes. Cool, nice. Yes, so please don't go changing cheese's gold pass. <laughs> but you know that that whole aspect of being able to do that, like as cheese mentioned, that's that's a very cool feature of NFTs. That I don't think we've really seen a lot of. Um, um, the only one I really saw was T Davis and NFT gamer, the one yeah. with him and Sani. And it's really cool. Cause he'll have contests to, uh, art the next immutable image. Yeah. Their clothes changes on. and stuff. Hey, yeah. I yeah, won I the contest for, for first place when I did a uh, why so Sanius. Nice. <laughs> I changed the, I changed it into, wait, let me see if I could pull them up. Uh, Razzle dazzle until I could find that then. <laughs> yeah, the only other thing that I saw is oh Jesus, probably over a year and a half ago now, somebody was in the wax community was doing where if you bought the NFT of a seed, it would change over time to a you know a seedling, and then it was supposed to be a, a vegetable or something. But then I don't think they ever followed up on it. It's um, it's one of those well, things where it's hard to stay motivated. Uh... This is another problem of many blockchain uh, projects and games in particular, when people uh, either lose motivation or doing the rug pulls. Yeah. 
and the world of crypto is full of this stuff so this uh, yeah. is this is my art and you can see i am a pixel artist so i did it in a pixel format and he mm -hmm. put it over the yeah so one one week he was wearing a suit and tie and then the next it got changed to this and yeah well now he's wearing a bunny suit this is the original <laughs> this is the original <laughs> That's nice. Nice. Yeah, I got uh and then and then this is T Davis and his. I actually won the number two one from NFT Gamer. They were doing this thing where I don't remember what I did, but I got number two and I'm so happy. Nice. Yeah, they're they're a good uh they're I, I like TD. TD is awesome. Right. So with your project, Eagle, what, what's the next big, big thing you're working on for? Is there anything you're uh, cooking well, away at the moment? Currently, I'm working on adding uh, more languages so uh, mm -hmm. more people from international communities could join. So uh, first thing I did uh, for game was adding uh, Ukrainian language. Uh, then I had the Portuguese uh then nice. i had that uh one second please uh, sorry uh then i had that um, and currently i'm working um on adding um, filipino language for people from um, philippines because we have a huge community from philippines inside of the game well, Upland yep. has a huge Brazilian Portuguese uh, speaking customer base because they they opened up in Brazil, and uh, yeah. So I have to let see Prado know about this. She's actually a, a a really big gamer. She she was gaming with me last night, Ben. She was playing Seven Days to Die. Nice. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah there's a lot of these the filipino community the brazilian community a lot of these um places are really getting right into the play to earn aspect of this as a kind oh, of yeah. supplementary income sort of thing so yeah, yeah lots this of opportunities is, this is two major uh geos uh for the play to earn uh, projects Nice. Uh, there are also some additional, probably, but I'm not aware. You know, uh, my project is growing more or less organically uh, because I cannot spend uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, for uh, marketing, but, you know, spending as much as I can. So uh, from time to time, you know, some like one person from community like sports the game he or she loves it and then just spreads the world a uh, word uh, to his or her friends uh, and that's how you know uh, the overall game community emerged yeah so uh yeah we also have huge portuguese uh brazilian uh, community also spanish speaking uh from the Spain and also from Latin America, uh, then Filipinos. Uh, what else? A bit of Indonesia, uh, also US for sure. Uh, then uh, several people from Australia also uh, are playing uh, from time to time. Actually, I can <laughs> I can check. You know, right away, I have uh, all the info in the tips of my fingers, how they call it. Yes, that's right. And is this is this project, is this something you're working on entirely by yourself? Or do you have a small team behind you? or uh, Mostly by myself. I have a friend whose name is Sergey, and he helped him a lot with... Uh, some uh, first of all sound design all the sound design was made by him and uh, he also helps a bit with the game design and uh, majority of work unfortunately currently is done by myself 
Uh, but there will be a day when I will be able to hire more people and then we will kickstart something with VR support mm, yeah. and some uh, basically it's all, also written in uh, our roadmap so uh, the goal uh, is to have several games I don't want to stop on one game yeah uh, this uh, Wedges Farm game for sure will continue to grow and receive all the important updates and new features. But uh, sooner or later, uh, I will want to kickstart some another game. And uh, I have some crazy plans with virtual reality stuff and the game which will be accessible inside the virtual reality and just by playing on the phone and, uh, and the phone. PC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he loves everything. the phone. He loves the phone games. Accessibility. Uh, well, I just don't, I just never turn, I never get time to turn my computer on. So. Yeah, but uh, Wages Farm is available on the phone as we saw. Yeah, oh, yeah uh, it is. Yeah, they're always excited. <laughs> uh, there is such thing which called uh, progressive uh, web applications which allows to uh, download the web application inside the phone, whether it's Android or iOS, without using uh, their uh, proprietary stores. Mm, uh, yeah. And that helps a lot because dealing with uh, stores regulations yep. and crypto in the same way is kind of challenging because uh, one day you will either uh, stop using crypto for your transactions or stop using the store because this will break the overall regulation. Yes, Indeed. not to mention that they take a 30% cut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which could go for payment for servers or uh, refunds yeah. to players or for beer for myself. And, uh, <laughs> you gotta have priorities. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, this is exactly um, what is problematic. But you know, I am also considering checking uh, the abilities of distributing through the app stores. Uh, but this is in stage of analysis currently. So yep. speaking about players, uh, the top geo is Brazil, then Philippines then Spain, then US, then Venezuela, then Argentina, then Indonesia, huh. then then India, then Turkey, and uh, France, Germany, Ukraine, Italy, Greece, uh, Canada. So, uh, Okay, and we have Australia, which is just above the United Kingdom. So as we more... should be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's cool. Uh wait, I had another question. Oh, I heard a parrot. Do you have a bird? Uh no. Oh, was, oh was... baby, Ben. Because he has the birds in the back squawking. No, me. Oh. It's sorry. either Ben or it was my wife who came into <laughs> the room. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> well, uh, this is one of two options. <laughs> uh, no, it wasn't me. It's winter. All the birds are sleeping. Yeah, you know, she came like, what are you doing? She at <laughs> my you should have introduced her. Yeah, like, huh? <laughs> Talking to random people on the internet, nothing oh, to fear. Yeah, that's the new norm. That's <laughs> yeah. the new norm. I don't have any real friends. It's just, it's yeah, just well, bad. <laughs> it's better to have some, <laughs> at least some. Yeah. Telling you, that's and I have, I have a huge amount of friends in real life, like. Oh, they all live in New York because I'm originally from New York and then I moved to uh, Arizona three years ago because uh, my husband was looking for work and it just ended up being nice. It's 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 different. It's really different here, but 
but yeah, nobody really wants to come visit Arizona. <laughs> I was like, I was like, Arizona, what? And but once you come here, it's fine. But uh, what is the distance between New York and Arizona? Oh, a lot. Uh, the plane ride over here was about five, six hours. Wow. I, yeah, America's huge. huge. <laughs> that's huge distance. That's huge. Yeah, and it's a desert. It's a been. desert. Yeah, um, <laughs> uh, when I was a kid, I had um, a t-shirt with desert, the truck, cactus, road, and Arizona, you know, print with letters. <laughs> so this is how I imagine Arizona every time I hear about the state. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's different. It's It's way different than what I'm used to, but... Yeah, but at least you have a <clears throat> nice uh, hot climate. Dry, dry heat. Yeah, it's not bad. I mean, it goes pretty high though. Like, uh, um, last summer we had 123 Fahrenheit. Let me tell you what that is in Celsius. <laughs> I see you trying to Way figure it out. Way too much. <laughs> like 45, maybe pulling that out of my ass. I don't know. Let's see. You might be. Oh, six. It's fifty. 50. Yeah, but it was some instances of extreme heat, I believe. I heard somewhere yeah. in news last year that it was uh, some extreme heat. And I have uh, one friend of mine who moved to Texas like two mm. years ago. Uh, so he texted me that uh, his car uh, was a bit meltdown, uh, probably during those events. I don't know. They yeah, can cook you... a fried egg on there. Yeah, and windscreens fall out, the windscreen rubbers melt, all sorts of crazy stuff happens when you start getting into that heat. Or you go and drive on the road, the bitumen's melting. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. that's extreme. Yeah, well, right. here here in Kiev, we have, like, in winter, it could go to minus 20 degrees Celsius. Wow. Minus yeah, that's 20, like minus 20. No, thanks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. And in summer, I believe, the most I experienced here was uh, 30 plus 37 Celsius plus 39 maybe. Uh, but the air here is much more humid, so it's like kind of hell. Uh, <laughs> so we have uh, the worst of both worlds. The worst of both worlds. <laughs> my, nice. my husband's from Finland, right? Ah, yeah, yeah. yeah I know the country. So um, we actually met on a video game. So he was born there. He lived there uh, and he came to the States for, for when we met. But I love visiting there because when it gets really cold, the snow turns into powder <clears throat> and yeah, you don't, yeah, yeah. You don't exactly. shovel it. You just sweep it with a broom. Do, do, do. And I, I was just like, whoa, that's yeah, You make it sound cool. so easy and fun. It was easy and fun, Ben. It well, it depends on the amount of snow. Uh, you know, <laughs> here, oh, it was uh, a lot. It was a lot. The, it when, was. We went to. It was around uh, April, uh, early April, and we went to this lake lake house thing for uh, my mother in law's birthday. And the lake, the whole lake was frozen, and there was about like maybe two feet of snow over the lake so w being Finns, and he has like three brothers one sister they sh they swept the snow off the lake a little bit and then they they had a saw and then they cut mm -hmm. this this circle so they could go ice swimming the ice was like that thick when they cut it yeah that's uh, pretty dangerous but um, the amount of ice which you are showing is on the edge, on the limit. We also have here <laughs> such, um, how you call it, uh, funny games. But this usually happens after the sauna. So, yeah, uh, yeah, no, when, they were going back and forth from the sauna yeah, to the when ice you, hole. When, when you are hot after the sauna, uh, it's uh, pretty pleasing to jump into the cold water. Says you. What, as soon as I come out of the sauna, I feel like I'm going to get hypothermia. <laughs> the last <laughs> so, thing I want to do is jump into an ice water hole. You've spent not enough time in sauna. No, I'm from the Bronx. 
I'm a Bronx, <laughs> New York girl. So like me going there, I had to do an Andrew Tate and sit on the first the kid the kid bench and <laughs> <laughs> that Mimi is hilarious but yeah basically I needed to do the the smallest amount of heat possible and sit on the kid the kid bench mm -hmm. but like every house has a sauna the guest house that his dad made in front of the real house where we stayed had a sauna yeah this is <clears throat> pre pretty common even here, but we are much more southern country than Finland <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Much more southern. For example, in April here. No, sometimes there is snow in April, but uh, this is exception of the rules rather than rule. Yeah, yeah. I remember going there one summer and it was uh, 85 degrees. And um, everybody was dying because they were going through a heat wave. I think 85 is like, what, 27? Yeah, this is kindergarten. <laughs> but for them, you know, it was crazy. Oh, 29. Yeah, yeah. They were like, oh, 29. Oh, my God, I'm dying. It's heat. It's too much. What is too hot for you, Ben, in Celsius? Well, it depends because I lived up north Queensland where it's there's only two seasons, hot and wet, hot and dry. Uh, dry. So that gets in the... Uh, 35s 38s pretty regularly but it's extremely humid so you're just constantly wet um, but then i live down the south of australia in far western victoria as well where it's just gets to 45 maybe but it's excruciatingly dry so you go outside and you get wind burnt so where i live on the gold coast it's kind of the happy medium it's you know a hot day for us might be 32 33 but it's kind of little bit humid it's not to the extremes and it it never gets super cold here like if it gets down to 11 degrees people are walking around with jumpers and beanies and gloves on thinking shit it's cold so yeah no it's pretty <laughs> it's pretty pretty casual here like it's i don't know what the weather is today it's probably probably a low of maybe 16 or something tonight but we're probably going to oh, have the first nice. fire the first outdoor fire of the season because it's you know it's kind of cooled off a bit just depends on the wind. It's been really windy here the last few days. Anyhow, how do we get on the topic of weather? We're wildly off track here. This is... <laughs> so do you uh, have anything to kind of uh, leave us with in uh, regards to your project? Do you have any any upcoming things in the works that you're planning? So as I, as I told, uh, working <laughs> on some uh, multilingual abilities. And after that, I promise that there will be continuous tournaments like weekly or monthly tournaments That's for the cool. pvp yeah and um, i have to launch a token at last uh, i have planning to do it this spring and uh, not much time left in this spring to be honest nope. i'm like finding myself uh, uh, too much work and too, not too much time. Yes, but, everybody's uh, in the same boat. Yeah, but the smart contract is kind of ready. The stuff with token is that uh, your smart contract, it's better to be, you know, uh, validated by some security auditors, which does not guarantee anyone from a scam, but people love to have it, you know, yep. for the checkbox. I myself um, passed several ISO 9001 uh, certifications for different projects. I know how the cybersecurity works. Like nice, indeed. Yeah, you know, having uh, I have a great experience. Uh, like work starting from the coder and ending with uh, a C-level position uh, and managing the half of the company, like all the technical stack, starting from the development, testing, security, audits, regulations. Uh, there are many things in my head Probably some are not needed, but you know, this is what you're gaining with experience. 
So uh, the token contract is better to be uh, you know audited by some third party, and uh, this also costs a lot because normal audit is like uh, let's say ten to twenty k. Uh, with the reputable name of auditor and uh, I'm trying to find uh, some shortcuts on this stuff. Let's see how I will be able to do it, but uh, there are two things that I know. The first, that I need a token with the smart contract <laughs> and the second, that it has to be like audited. Yes. Let's see. Let's see uh, how uh, it will end up. Uh, but uh, those are the closest plans for the game itself. Unless well, something happened. All right. Well, that's really cool. I look forward to it. I'm going to keep playing. I'm going to keep spreading the word. Um, I really that appreciate bank. I need to get to the bank. I'm halfway there, Ben. You're going to play yes. with me. You're going to play with me. And uh, uh, do you have time to stay on uh, to talk about the articles we have? It's just a fun For little sure. thing we do. Yeah, For yeah, sure. that's it's cool. A, it's a Friday night here, and uh, I don't have any plans. So nice. I have two options, either to return back to work, but I'm like full today. I already like completed more that I wanted to. Or to stay hang up with you guys. And I prefer to speak <laughs> to people a bit. All right. That sounds good. Well, just to wrap up, how can people get in touch with you or how can they find out more about your project? What's the best way to do that? Uh, well, there's a website called wagesfarmgame.com. Yep. Uh, probably this is the... Or you can Google for Wages Farm. Yep. The website will pop up. And uh, that's the initial point. And uh, also I have all the socials, uh, like all the possible. Discord, Telegram, Twitter, YouTube, you name it. Everything. Um, all right. Yeah. It's so we're links gonna have, will be in the description. Yeah, we're going to have that in the YouTube description so people can get onto that really easily. I'm going to pull up the first article. So we want extremely biased where is it hold on <laughs> is this what what are we going with for first the she sheba one is that yes the first one? yes mm. now i am i'm a big investor in shibu i heard that the, i did a when you were gone ben in japan i did a show looking into the shiba metaverse they have a shiba metaverse which is really cool oh that was the one with blue rain when she was on with me um now this one caught my eye because this one says shiba inu metaverse sparks hollywood attention <coughs> so, hollywood attention yeah what the hell <clears throat> So Shiba Inu Metaverse advisor revealed that SHIB Metaverse project took center stage in Hollywood circles. Shiba in regards to what? <laughs> Metaverse is garnering a significant inter interest as it as its official launch approaches. A recent statement from Marcy Jastro, uh, sorry if I mispronounce your name, the Shiba Inu Metaverse advisor revealed that SHIB Metaverse project is already sparking attention in Hollywood. You want to take this away, Ben? Can you grandfather size it up? Yeah, <laughs> just a thousand. <laughs> Outmade attended the recently concluded National Association of Broadcasters, which was held in Las Vegas. Yada, yada, yada. She featured in the event's Web3 Advisory Council, blah, blah, blah. Following the event, Oldmate chronicled her experience in a series of tweets revealing that Shiba Inu Metaverse remained the talk of Hollywood during the show. Yeah, but what? Talking yeah. what? Like shilling it? They're going to be paid to shill it? Uh, they're going to make a movie? What? Um, Emphasised that Shibarium can help bring the project to fruition. Um, great few days of panels and interviews shib the metaverse is the talk of hollywood yeah but again ship army what is there any details of what this is related to can you scroll it down here? 
Notably, the NAB, NAB show is an annual trade show and conference for professionals in the broadcasting and media industries. Blah, 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 blah. The NAB <laughs> show is considered one of the largest and oh, this is fluff, fluff, fluff. Consequently, the <laughs> fact that the Shiba Inu's metaverse project remained a topic of discussion. Yeah, just, this is really fluffy. It's just fluffed out to the extreme. We don't look at these articles. We just find interesting uh, titles and just come on with it. Yeah, but it says the talk of Hollywood. The talk might have been this is a shit project. It's going to be a rug pull. Don't touch it. No, <laughs> shh. I am too invested, Ben. <laughs> the disclosure <laughs> triggered the attention of this. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This remark from Jastro comes a month after the immersive media expert disclosed that she had a meeting with old mate, the futurist at Paramount Pictures and Viacom CBS in this year's blah, blah, blah festival. The disclosure triggered the attention of the Shiba Inu community as conjectures of an alliance emerge. Okay, Paramount Pictures. We're getting somewhere finally. Yeah. We call that the Shiba Inu Metaverse Project was invited to display at the Yeah Yeah, yeah Festival in Texas. <laughs> The project debuted at the Wagmai Temple Hub at the festival, revealing an immersive experience within the metaverse. The blah, 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 blah. Um, captivating experience within the virtual world. Developers revealed that the metaverse will be partially open for users by December 2023. Wow, this, not a yeah, lot of but like when it opens up and they have someone like Paramount Pictures in there, can you imagine like the kind of crazy stuff we're gonna see or or events that they're gonna have they're gonna go big on that yeah, i just wonder what be, they could be a real deal and could be not because uh, as a person who attended and presented on tons of kind of exhibitions like this like after every exhibition i've been doing the press release which is exactly like this Mm. I've we've met with all the probable and not probable like yes. we uh, yeah with uh, Warner Brothers, uh, Metro Goldwyn Mayer and Peter Pan, and they showed a huge potential in our project and in our company, and maybe we will have some collaboration or deal. But where is the meat? Uh, where is the facts? Yeah. It's, talk is cheap. Talk, talk is, is cheap. cheap. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, you never know. It could you, something like the Shiba Inu Metaverse could spin off as an animation series, like Bluey or something. <gasps> or like I, I just went and watched the Mario Super Brothers movie last night. That was pretty I cool. Want, yeah, I want to see that. It was really good. Um, there was tons of Easter eggs in it, so that was kind of cool. It, I will say the ending was seemed very rushed and very weak i don't know i, I thought the ending was shit ass to be honest really? but um the, the yeah the general vibe and that was really cool the kids loved it that's the most important thing but yeah so who knows um yeah she you know metaverse well the metaverse hasn't even released yet so this seems a bit cut before the horse but um we'll wait and see i've got a bag of shiba too so i wouldn't mind seeing that bag pumped Oh yeah. Yeah, everyone have a bit, you know. It everyone doesn't is, take much. <laughs> everyone is a Shiba hold at least one million of Shiba nowadays. At least yes. so, if you don't have at least a million Shiba, do you even crypto bro? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah, bro, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now this is this is your best mate. Ben, this is well, your best mates. mate. Poor old Zucker. We haven't we haven't we haven't checked in on Zucko in a few months. What what's happening? Well, his sister's doing a lot better than he is. I tell you that much. But uh, Zuckerberg's year of efficiency takes another turn as he joins McDonald's and Google by laying off thousands in the metaverse. Again. Hang on, before we go any further, we know that Google and Facebook have laid off thousands of jobs because they they created thousands of jobs for Web3 metaverse stuff and they've since pulled back on it. Why has McDonald's been thrown in the mix there? I think uh, McDonald's wanted to do something and then they were like, eh, forget it. <laughs> to be honest, Zach's metaverse is not a Web3 metaverse at all. Uh, how people see it connected, I don't know. Uh, it's kind of not related to blockchain and was mm. never oh. related to blockchain at all. They yeah. started some pushes with the Polygon and NFTs inside the uh, Instagram. 
and it ended there, but his metaverse was not connected to the blockchain. Uh, slightly more than at all, you know? Yeah. Uh, well, didn't he, he wanted to make his own crypto coin and the SEC or something put the kibosh on it pretty quick smart, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And for the McDonald's thing, I think that's so many companies. Like if you go to a checkout in Australia, there's all, it's all self-serve. Like I've mentioned this several times on the show. Now, if you go to Australia to order McDonald's, you order it on a big, massive touchscreen tablet. And it was interesting to see in Japan too. Um, when I was there recently, that's the self-serve thing there since COVID has boomed dramatically. And we even went to um, Uniqlo, like it's a major uh, low-end kind of cheap um, uh, fashion store, basically. It's a massive chain store. Um, we have the Uniqlo stores, Uniqlo stores now in Australia. And that system was you put all your, your clothes that you want in a basket and then they have this, this big tub at the checkout you just chuck the clothes in there and it automatically scans all the barcodes and brings it up. You don't even have to do the boop, boop, boop. Wow. Like that blew my wife's mind. Like we, we had to ask, how do we use this? And the lady's just like, just put the basket in here. And then it automatically does the checkout. That was wild. Yeah. So, yeah, that this was really nice. Cool. So I can see something like that coming in the future for your grocery shopping. Like if you've got your cart full of groceries, you just push it into a dock and it just scans everything automatically. And well, didn't Amazon have something like that that they wanted to do? Like where you pick something off the shelf and then mm. as you pass through a certain thing, um, it just kind of scans everything that is they in your have possession. It already. They have yeah, it yeah. already in production, by the way. Probably in California, as always. Uh, <laughs> but they have several retail shops Uh that's a available with those mm. technology and mm. they are launching uh, their uh, nft marketplace uh mm. somewhere in the end of april so yes that's what we always say like it's going to get to the point where you're going to have an nft that gives you discounts on those if you shop from a certain thing if you buy a certain thing you're going to get a reward well actually let's get the size up on this so i can read it and what is this actually about what are we what are we doing here? what's happened to my poor old mate suck now there you go oh uh, this Wednesday is a particularly difficult hump day for those who fell victim to Meta CEO Zuckerberg's overestimation of the e-commerce boom and how many people would care for the metaverse. Still way too early days. And it's not because the in-office coffee is bad or meal prepping <laughs> leftovers has gotten tired. Oh, this is a funny little, funny little writer here. Instead, layoffs are continuing. According to a memo viewed by Bloomberg, telling managers to brace for announcements today, Zucko, Zucko's memo said Facebook, WhatsApp, Instagram, and Reality Labs will be in the foreign. So it's across the board. Okay, so <clears> trimming <throat> down. Well, he's got to recoup. What was it? Ten billion they were losing or something. He's got to re recoup those from somewhere. This is far from Zucky's maiden voyage. When it comes to layoffs in November, he cut 11,000 positions, effectively making 13% of his workforce walk the plank. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. I mean, this is, we're going to this future. We got chat G GPT. We've got, you know, this, that, and the other, AI, this, AI, that, um, you know, automatic checkouts, a lot of these kind of low hanging fruit jobs. Yeah. They're, um, you, your time is limited. Yeah. So I have scary. a comment on this article after you will finish. Oh, you go for it whenever you want, Mike. Go for it. Uh, do you know that they are currently also hiring to the meta, like Facebook, uh, new software engineers for the Metaverse project? They're paying them six hundred thousand to a million as well. I actually covered that article uh, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, the wages are very good. Very good. Six hundred thousand to a million, like I said. Yeah. Well, well, what's the value there? <laughs> like you could have ten thousand workers who are kind of doing grunt work, or you could have, you know, say a dozen really highly paid workers that can do all of this AI stuff and that can cover all that base. It's it's kind of a uh, well, th there is some limit, you know. You like what of what one person can achieve uh, by doing the work because yeah. uh, 
in general, when you are trying to scale the organization, you have to find the perfect balance between uh, the needs of organization and amount. You know, I've been working in this field like for ages and been also scaling, not in the thousands, but uh, also when I've been working at Playtech, uh, the overall organization size was uh, about 6,000 people. Mm. And uh, they had a division of uh, one and a half thousand people, uh, like 1,000 people in uh, Kiev here. Mm. And uh, like all the technical stuff. Uh, and I've been a head of department, uh, head of one department. It's like about 200 people. Not the biggest one, but uh, 200 people is... Uh, the medium-sized one, let's say. Mm. And uh, in those big companies, when they are calculating the budgets for the next year, uh, they already know that in order to comply and to show to investors that their uh, p &L is okay and their uh, OPEX, and there is such kind of OPEX operation expenses, are not going uh, more than X, they are doing the job cuts. And it uh, happens usually once per year and it uh, is binded to the end of financial year uh, when this is planned. And there are many, many, many like thousands of occurrences, I can name it in all the technical giants in the world, st starting from Facebook, Meta, ending with Google, uh, when just after they cut 10,000 jobs, they open 10 and other thousands of jobs, maybe 5,000. Or they this boost the CEO they to boost the CEO pay. Although it's interesting in that last sentence, Jesus. There, what does it say about Apple? Fellow tech giant down the back there. Uh, fellow tech giant Apple largely has been saving off mass job cuts, opting for CEO pay cuts instead, and a tiny layoff in a corporate retail division. Yeah, so that's looking after your people there. So it said that yeah. Twitter's been cut, Amazon, Google, Apple. Yeah, right. everyone been cut, uh, like, uh, but the decision was made in the last year and mm. they are executing the cuts this year. Trust me, I know. Uh, they will reestablish this amount of job during the course of this year. Maybe when not, like, not all the jobs, but like 70, 85%. Whenever somebody mm. tells me, trust me, I have a tendency to not trust them. <laughs> uh, this is. Um, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's a joke. It's a joke. Trust me. Trust me is the uh, common Slavs, you know, Slavic uh. Uh, people. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, that's true. Work, it... Yeah, you know, you saw this um, uh, old YouTube ad about. Uh, uh, Russian or like ex-Soviet Union doesn't matter a guy who like uh, was holding a bank like hello I am Nikolai from the bank of Nikolai you give me money I put it to my pocket very safe in here trust me I have pen I have a pen yeah so uh, th this is like common in ex-Soviet <laughs> Union countries, like we have this kind of words. Uh, so uh, this is usually being reestablished according to my previous experience in uh, the big companies. Uh, unless, unless we will have uh, a full recession ongoing, which I personally don't believe taking into account all the financial uh indicators which we are currently seeing all right well that leads us to <clears throat> pubg creator to launch nft metaverse game this year now i'm just gonna say one thing but battle royales have become extremely popular and i am all for a battle royale 
NFT blockchain style style game. And I think this will do really well. What do you guys think? Are you a uh, battle royale kind of guy, Igor? I have been playing several like this PUBG, how we call it here, uh, PUBG. P uh, player, uh, player unknown, yeah, player, yeah, player unknown, unknown battlegrounds, uh, Fortnite. Uh, um, my, I have a son. He is seven years old. He is playing <clears throat> Fortnite. So, you play? Uh, you ever heard of Overwatch? Yeah. For sure, I'm a, uh, I'm a big Overwatch fan. Uh, you know, like part of Overwatch being developed here in Kiev. All right. Yeah, we have like many, many, many gaming companies had offices here pre-war. Like um, uh, there are also like majority left, but uh, many people flew out of the country because of um, the current circumstances. Uh, but uh, many of the um, jobs being preserved and people continue to work. So I even know uh, one guy who has been working on Overwatch directly by his hand that's pretty cool yeah nice. and this well, company's working to create their own metaverse <laughs> called migaloo that they're going to host this game with him that's freaking amazing i love that migaloo yeah. that's that's awesome the, so south korean studio breakout battle royale shooter PUBG battlegrounds original player unknowns battlegrounds hasn't forgot about the metaverse in fact it's planned web3 metaverse game platform tentatively called Migaloo is still in the works and now slated to launch sometime this year. That's mm, pretty cool. Yeah, Crafton in South Korea, augmented reality firm Naver Z has created a joint venture company based in North America and poured 36.8 million into Migaloo's development according to a release this week. Under the arrangement, Crafton will own 85% stake in a venture and Naver Z will hold the remaining 15%. Yes, this, that last that, oh, that this, paragraph there's a good one. <laughs> but this isn't a sucker Zuckerbergian metaverse. <laughs> Zuckerbergian. Migaloo is being developed by AAA Game Studio and aims to offer a create to earn system in which users can create, buy, and sell in game assets. Yes. Yes. While little else is known about the project, it sounds like the world of Migaloo could resemble something like Roblox, but with NFTs. Yes. I'm excited about that because. If Roblox ever did NFTs with their user base and make it easy enough for like the kids to be familiar with, you would be not only giving the creators more value uh, to make stuff, you'd be giving the holders more value. Like instead of just buying endless stuff to put on your character in Roblox, you could then again sell those if they're rare, if you win them and this, this and that. So I'm, I'm all for that. This joint push towards web three gaming offerings, game offerings is yet another example of firms in the Asian market, developing games and experiencing experiences that leverage blockchain. Jap Japan based final fantasy creator square Enix has announced its own web three game while Japan and South Korea based Nexon is developing Maple Story Universe. I love Maple Story. All right. Singapore based Razor has launched a web three incubator as well. While South Korea firm We Made plans to release some of its biggest titles abroad with web three integrations. I'm excited. Yeah, it's it's all heading in that direction. This was like it's the best. Get there. We saved the best article for last. This is amazing. Yes, we will have to wait and see on that one. Yeah. So, well, this was a great show. Uh, thanks for joining us, Igor. We thank uh, you guys yeah. for uh, hosting this amazing show. And Day all the best with your project and everything you've got going in the future. We'll have to check back in. I'll, I'm sure Cheese will want to in the future shows when she's got a bank up and running and we'll be able to outline that whole process. How Hell that's yeah. 
<laughs> I'll try to get as many people over to there as possible. It's really cute. Thank you for joining us. We're just going to wrap this up on our end, but yeah, keep in touch, man. Thank you. Thank you, guys. It's been a pleasure. Uh, thank you for a nice conversation. The part about weather was really, really uh, <laughs> engaging. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, so uh, I'll see you around. <clears throat> thank you, Mike. Enjoy, enjoy the rest of your evening. Yes. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. And you can. Do you want me to do it? Stay fresh cheese bags. Oh. You want to do it this time? Oh, yeah. I think, yeah. I, I, th I think I just did. Do it again. I missed it. Do it again. Stay fresh, you dirty old cheese bags. Dirty old freaking cheese bags. Go ahead, get your picky up. Talk about the cheese, motherfucker. Go ahead, get your picky up. Go ahead, get your picky up. Go ahead, get your picky up. Talk about the cheese, motherfucker. Go ahead, get your picky up. Go ahead, get your picky up. Still empire, samurai, riding on the dingo, flying through the sky. Cheese in the house, get fucked and dry. Put you with the hairbrush, shoot you with the knife. Still empire, samurai, riding on the dingo, flying through the sky. Put you with the knife, flying through the sky. Still empire, samurai, riding on the dingo, flying through the sky. Cheese in the house, get fucked and dry. Put you with the hairbrush, shoot you with the knife. Still empire, For some of that quality outdoor decor, but you got no freaking idea where to go. Now oh, come on over to Samurai Aquatics and Decor for all your outdoor decor needs. Got yourself an empty plot of boring virtual real estate in the metaverse, do ya? Yeah, just delete that. I'm still not ready. Sorry. Get yourself an empty plot of boring virtual real estate in the metaverse, do ya? Or maybe some kind of crappy ramshackle building that, I don't know, needs a bit of extra spunk to it or something. And stop mucking about and get yourself over to Samurai Aquatics Discord to see all our available stock. We've got loads of different decor to spend your pretend money on. We've got saunas to fire you up, an ice bath to chew you the fudge out, literally stock coming out of our ears, grills, swings, seating and more, so much more. And if we don't got it, give us a buzz and we can probably make it. Get yourself on over to Samurai Aquatics at 30 Aqua Vista Way in Midtown Terrace, San Francisco, Liggety Split and gorge yourself on outdoor decor.